اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہم صلی علی محمد ولا علیہ و اصحابی اجمعین الحمدللہ رب العالمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Okay, today I'm going to tell you the story of Shaddad, who was a very tyrant king, a naughty, evil king, from long, long time ago, ancient times. And this story is in the Quran, in Surah Al-Fajr and Surah Al-A'raf. In fact, for a long time, nobody knew about the story of Shaddad and his city Iram and only in the Quran was this story all the historians and archaeologists they didn't know about this king and the, this country only in 1962 did they find with satellite pictures the city of Iram and then they found in 1957 in another city in Syria called Ebla they found some writings about this king and this story okay so I'm going to tell you a story that was in the Quran and nobody else knew about it except it was in the Quran for a long time okay so we have to go all the way back to the time of Nuh alayhi salam so you all remember the story of Nuh alayhi salam Noah who made a big boat on top of a mountain and everybody who was good they was allowed to go on the boat and all the naughty people, the evil people, the people who worshipped statues instead of Allah and they were not allowed to go on this boat and some of them they would laugh and they would say we don't need to go in your boat we can go on the mountain and the mountain is going to save us because the water can't reach the mountains but they were wrong because Allah made it rain for 40 days and 40 nights until all the mountains were under water and all the people who worshipped uh, statues who made statues and all the ones who worshipped anything except for Allah they were all dead only the Muslims were still left alive and the animals that were on the boat two by two one, one male and one female of every kind of animal that Nuh alayhi salam was able to save um, so what happened afterwards is when the rain stopped when the rain stopped Nuh alayhi salam sent out a crow to find land but the crow was flying everywhere and he couldn't find any land so he died he got tired and he fell in the water and died and never came back and then Nuh alayhi salam he sent a dove and the dove flew and flew and flew until he found a olive tree and then he brought back a branch of the olive tree and then Nuh alayhi salam knew that there was land now and the water had gone down so then they went with the boat to the land and they got off the boat onto the land and from the boat all the animals came down and there was Nuh alayhi salam there was his son Ham and his son Sham and uh, his grandchildren one of his grandchildren's name was Iram and Iram later when he was older he went south to a place that we call Yemen today which is the south, most south part of Arabia and him and his children they, the language that they spoke became known as Arabic and his children were very tall and very big and very strong and they had lots of children until there was a big family a very big and strong tribe and they were like giants they were very very tall and they could pick up trees and just pull them up with their hands because they were tall and strong in fact of all of the grandchildren of Nuh alayhi salam and their tribes the tribe of Iram was the strongest and their army was the biggest and the most mightiest so in the end Iram built a big city in Yemen and they called it 
Iram after Iram so it was called the Iram the city with the lots of pillars because on every hill in the city they built a big tall tower it had lots of big skyscrapers towers in the Quran it calls it Inamazatil Imad Iram with lots of towers lots of pillars and what happened was Iram died and his son Ad became king of this city and Ad became a naughty king he made a big statue just like the people that Allah destroyed with the water that could, were not allowed to go on no Allah's boat again he made a statue and Allah was not happy with that he made a big castle and outside the castle he made a statue of himself and he told people that they have to bow to the statue then years later Ad died and his son Shadid became king and Shadid didn't break the statue that his dad made but he also didn't make a statue of himself and he prayed to Allah and he was a good man he was a good king if people had a fight he would tell them to stop fighting and he would listen to both of their stories what each of them says of what happened and he would judge with, a f with something that was very fair he, was, he would tell them to do something that was fair he was a good judge and everybody knew from the, their country and all the other cities that Shadid was a good king who would judge who was a fair judge and he would also help all the poor people and give them food and things and he lived for a, li for, for a while and everything was peaceful and nice and Allah was happy with him then he died and his brother became king his brother's name was Shaddad and Shaddad wasn't like his brother he didn't like helping poor people and he didn't like to be fair instead he was very naughty he had lots of wives I think he had a hundred wives or something like that and he would stand with them on the castle and look at the people down below and he would laugh with them and say look why don't we just kill some of those people outside the castle and he would show off to his wives and say I'm so powerful if I just tell my soldiers they'll just kill those poor people and then he would tell the soldiers and the soldiers will just catch the poor people they were just not doing anything wrong they were just walking outside the castle and he would kill them and like his dad he made a big statue of himself and he told people that they have to bow down to the statue if they went near it and he lived for a long time and he kept being bad to people if he wanted something that somebody had he wouldn't give him the money and buy it from them or he wouldn't swap it with something else that they wanted he would just take it from them by force and if the man complained then he would just throw him in jail or kill him so he, everybody in all the countries and all the cities soon became to know that Shaddad was a very evil cruel naughty tyrant king that was not fair not like his brother and the people would complain quietly because if he heard them that he would complain loudly they would get, arrest them just like all the other dictators that came later on and then after a while Allah sent an angel to his cousin Shaddad had a cousin his name was Hud and he lived in the same city because they had the same granddad Iram was the granddad of Shaddad and Iram was the granddad of Hud but Hud was a good man he liked to help people poor people and he liked to be fair if people were arguing or fighting he would listen to both of them and he would judge fairly just like uh, Shaddad's brother Shadid and he would pray to Allah and he wouldn't pray to any statues and he wouldn't make any statues so one day Allah sent an angel to Hud and the angel told Hud salam, that Allah wants him to go to Shaddad and tell him to stop being so naughty but nicely 
because Allah was going to make him a prophet and so he listened to Allah and he went to the castle and to visit the naughty king Shaddad and he go to him and said oh Shaddad Allah has told me to tell you that you have to be nice now and you should stop being naughty stop hurting people for no reason stop taking people's uh, things without asking them or paying them or giving them something in return stop putting people in jail for no reason and stop killing them and hurting them for no reason and you shouldn't make statues and you shouldn't tell people to bow to statues because we're only supposed to bow to Allah and only to pray to Allah and you shouldn't tell people to to worship your dad's statue and if you can if you're strong enough you should break the statues but he wouldn't listen and he, and he said Allah says you should pray to Allah and you should give some food or money to the poor people and help the poor people so Shaddad said to who? they said why should I listen to Allah? if I listen to him what would he give me? And Hud alayhi salam he said if you listen to Allah then he will let you go to his garden in heaven in Jannah he's got a very very nice garden he's got nice buildings made of gold and silver and rubies and diamonds and emeralds and sapphires and all the nice things that you could think of and there's lots of nice trees with fruits that are tasty there's banana trees there is pomegranate trees there are date trees there are coconut trees there are grapes and very very big blackberries blackberries so big that just one blackberry is like a lots of people could eat just one blackberry a blackberry that's so big that everybody could just take one tiny round bit from a blackberry and it will be enough for them to make them full and it will taste very very nice and did I say dates, bananas, grapes, blackberries and there's apples and all the different types of fruits that you can think of okay and there's there's beautiful people walking in the garden to help you to bring you some food or some drinks or, or a cushion and there's rivers in, 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 in Allah's garden there's a river that's full of honey and if you want you could just get some honey from the river and drink it or eat it and there's another river that's full of milk and the milk never goes bad it always stays fresh and if you want some to drink some milk you can just get some from the river there's, a, there's another river of water and the water is so tasty and always stays clean doesn't get dirty and there's another river of pure wine that doesn't have any poisons like alcohol in it and if you drink it you never get a headache and it just tastes nice and and doesn't give you a headache not like the wine in this world because that's not allowed for Muslims to drink because it's got poison in it called alcohol and if you drink it then you get a headache and if you drink a lot of it your tummy aches and if you eat, drink even more of it then you have to vomit because your body doesn't like to have poison inside it and then your liver has to clean all the poison out but the wine in Allah's garden that comes from the river of wine is pure and doesn't have any poison in it so it doesn't give you a headache and there's these um, servants that uh, always stay young and they bring you whatever you want and there's flying horses, horses with wings some people who are in Jannah if they were very good in this world they get to go on these flying horses and fly everywhere in Jannah 
wherever they want to go and there's a tree near where these flying horses they walk and live they live under this tree and this tree grows clothes you climb up the tree and you get, pick the clothes you like and you wear it and then you go on the flying horse and you fly everywhere so Hud salam tells Shaddad that this is what Allah will give you you can go there and if you don't listen to him then he won't let you go there and he will punish you by burning you with a black fire in hell that's very very hot and there's scorpions and snakes made of fire that will come and bite you and sting you and, and if they bite you you burn because they're made of fire and they have very strong poisons that burn you when they bite you and they sting you so then after he heard all this Shaddad said hmm I think I'm gonna make my own Jannah I don't need Allah's Jannah I don't need to go to Allah's garden I'm gonna make my own paradise my own heaven and that is that a good idea or bad idea so Hud said he went back home and he came back the next day and he told him again he said Shaddad Allah wants you to pray to him and Allah wants you to help the poor people and Allah wants you to stop being so naughty and stop hurting people for no reason and he will let you have your Jannah go, he will let you go to Allah's Jannah Shaddad is not interested he says I don't need Allah's Jannah I'm making my own Jannah he says, can you tell me what does this Jannah of uh, Allah's Jannah what, are the, what kind of trees it has so then Hud will wait for the angel Gabriel Jibra'il Islam to come and tell him some more about Jannah and tell him about the different types of trees they have and then when he tells him then Shaddad tells his uh, helpers to go and get the trees that look like that from wherever they can find them in different countries and plant it in this big garden that Shaddad's making and he made it really big it was like a um, they think they said it was something like a more than a thousand miles long and more than a thousand miles wide and he had really really big walls and inside he made lots of buildings that were very pretty and he put some gold and silver on the buildings because Hud al-Islam said that the buildings in Allah's Jannah are made of gold and silver bricks so he put some gold and silver on them and he made some rivers and he told all the other little kings because Shaddad was the strongest king in the world because he had the biggest army and the strongest army he told all the little kings in all the other towns and cities he said you better give me all your money that you can spare because I'm making this big project I'm making a heaven on earth and he said send me all the best engineers and your best scientists and your best managers your best project managers and send me all the beautiful ladies in your country because I want them to come and work in my garden and they can walk around and bring things to people they can be waitresses and models and singers they can sing to make people who come to visit my garden happy so they sent them all these things there and they all the kings collected money from all the people so that he could have the money he needed and they bought the gold and the silver and all the jewels so he made a river and he throwed lots of jewels and precious stones in the river so it looks like um, the rivers in Jannah because Hud told him that in Jannah on the banks of the rivers instead of having sand you have lots of precious stones like diamonds and sapphires and emeralds and rubies so he spent 700 years because in those days they used to live for a long time they were big giant people and they lived for a long time so he started building this heaven when he was 200 years old and he built it for 700 years and when he was 900 years old and it was nearly finished he said to his generals and his helpers he said let's go and see this garden it's nearly finished 
and he invited some of the other kings that were helping him to come with him and he made a big team of people to go and visit this uh, this big garden he called it his heaven on earth and all this time Hud would every day come and tell him to stop this and to pray to Allah and he didn't pray and he didn't help the poor people instead he took money from the poor people who wanted to buy some bread with it or some food and he said give me that money I want to use it to make this garden even more beautiful and so he went with his generals and his army on a horse and they were riding to this big garden that was outside his city a bit far away because it was too big to be inside the city and there was a big black cloud in the sky and for lots of years there was no rain until all the animals were very very skinny and the earth was dry and the trees were dying and people were praying for rain so when they saw the big black cloud in the sky above the city of Iram they thought yes finally Allah is going to give us some rain because normally a black cloud has lots of water inside it and it's heavy and so when the black cloud comes it starts to rain so while there was a black cloud over the city he rode out over the city to see his garden and when he got near the garden about one mile away he saw a golden deer and he told his generals um, you keep going I'm just going to catch this deer and then I'll come and join you so he went chasing this deer and the deer went left and it went right and it went zigzaggy and he went wiggly and he went this way and that way and he went into a forest and Shaddad followed him on his horse he wanted to catch that deer it was so beautiful when he went into the forest his horse found it difficult to run so fast because there were so many trees so he couldn't find the deer and the deer ran away and he couldn't see it anywhere he kept looking and looking and looking but he couldn't see the golden deer anywhere then he was trying to find his way out of the forest back to his army who were going to see the garden suddenly he felt a bit scared he was all on his own riding his horse and chasing the deer now they can't see the deer he's trying to he's lost in the jungle he's trying to come out of the jungle and he sees there's somebody else on another horse riding next to him and he doesn't know who it is and for the first